Everyone, of course, has got a different idea about how the bracket will play out. Check out the archive over on the website. There's Stevie picking, I think, eventually a Spain-Brazil final with Brazil winning it all. For one next Liverpool lad to another. Right then, Stevie, you, you're not happy that everyone seems to be choosing a Spain-Brazil <laughs> yeah. final. You said everybody can be different. Yeah, four people out of five have chosen Brazil. No, it's true. Spain. It okay. is true. Right, so... You've got to bring it then. So something, I'm something a little bit different. Portugal against Sweden. <laughs> there you go. Right, let's start oh, with Spain, Russia. Yeah, I'm going to have Spain, of right, course. Right, well, that's what everyone predicting. Yeah. Croatia, Denmark? Yeah, Croatia. Only because I don't think the I don't think Russia and Denmark are good enough. Sweden, Switzerland? Yeah, Sweden again. There you go, down there, good. And then England. The mighty England. England to go through. Right then, let's keep going, shall we, on this side? Yes, of course. Spain, Croatia? I'm going to go for Croatia to beat Spain. I don't think Spain are good enough in attacking areas, I really don't. Sweden, England? I'm going to go for England to beat Sweden. Has that worked? Well, I'm just going to go, what if you struggle? How, <laughs> how hard do you have to press these buttons? <laughs> and then who do we get to the final? Croatia? Oh, Asia. See, senor. You pressed it twice then, try again. Croatia. There you go, Thank right. You. Take it to the other side of the bracket then. I'm going to go for a really poor game, but I think Portugal right. will out-defend Uruguay. I don't think I, make it go yellow. I don't think either of them are good enough, to be very honest. I don't like either of them. All right, fine. I'm France, going Argentina. Go, I'm going to go France, because I think their misfiring bunch will start to fire. Brazil, Brazil Mexico. of course. Brazil, of course. Not too much for Mexico. And Belgium, Japan. Belgium will beat Japan. OK, right then. Let's take it through to the quarterfinals. Portugal, France. I'm going to have France to beat Portugal. Yeah, and then Brazil. I'm going to have Belgium to knock out the Brazilians. Yeah. Excuse me. It's all right, don't worry. There we go. Because I want an all-European final. I'm going to have France. France, Croatia. Croatia. And then who will win it all? Um, France. France doing it all. Something a bit different. Something a bit different. Why not? Why not, eh? Anyway? Why not? Uh, uh, thank you very much, of course, for something different as well. You can check out Extra Time over on the website where we answer your questions every day. And it provides a lot of material for the best of the week. It's your turn, Craig, to do the World Cup predictor, as we are now, of course, at the bracket stage. You had Germany winning it all. My first half wasn't very good. Well, no, indeed. Uh, oh. You said the bar low. Let's start with Uruguay-Portugal. I'm going to go Uruguay, two match, one us against one, Cavani and Suarez. Uh, France-Argentina. Argentina, I don't see the shambles improving, and I think the French will be too strong for them. And what about Brazil-Mexico? Again, favourites to win now. Seven hooks to come home. Bel Sharp <laughs> Sharpish. Belgium, Japan. Uh, Belgium. Belgium? Okay, let's Fish take it to the other side. Spain, Russia? Yep, hosts are going to go out. Uh, Croatia, Denmark? Too strong for Denmark. Sweden, Switzerland? I'm going to go Sweden, although I think Switzerland have got more talented players. I think they're better organised. This one's killing me. Because you want, you, like you, you, you want to see England lose? No, no, I don't want to see England lose, but I don't like what they did, leaving all the players out. I, I know Belgium did it as well. If James is fit, and that's a big if, I'm going to go for Colombia. And I think it could come back to bite England in the backside. All right, then. Let's take it through to the quarterfinals. Spain, Croatia. What a game that will be. No, I'm just going to go for Spain just. Uh, Sweden, Colombia. I'm going to go for Colombia to get to the quarters. And you take it to the other side, then. Uruguay, France. I'm just going to go for France. Just, and then I'm, I'm going to go for Brazil. So then, the semi-finals, France-Brazil. I think, the, I think the final is going to be Brazil against the 2010 winners, Spain. And who will win that final, Craig Burley? I'm going to go for Brazil, now that I've dumped the Germans. <laughs> yes, we have that much choice. Uh, Brazil then to win the World Cup, according to Craig. Uh, just a reminder, it's not too late to get involved with our World Cup predicts. Uh, you can join at the knockout stages and fill out your bracket. Welcome into Extra Time. It's Friday. Yeah. Brian's here. You seem, well excited. Well. Excited. you seem excited. Yeah, you seem excited. I'm excited. Well, just happy to be here. It's all right. What, what, are you what? No, I'm just You're going straight home? Yeah, straight home. Uh, and and <laughs> staying home? And then he's coming out with me. Hey, <laughs> there it is. 
Very. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Dentist chair. I mean, everything, everything's amazing. <laughs> Live on the ESPN FC Periscope. <laughs> right. New contract for Fellaini at Manchester United. How is this improving the squad for next season? Okay. Um, how is it improving? Well, it's not, because he's been there for a number of years. I just think he's... Um, firstly, he's been very important at times for Manchester United, the way they're playing. Of course, he wouldn't get into many teams, but he's a Mourinho favourite. He's come off the bench numerous times and performed really, really well and rescued them at times. Mm. And I think Jose's you know, trying to reward him. So, improving the squad, of course, he's not at this moment in time. Fred will improve the squad. Fellaini's been there for a while. I've got to say Fred. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm happy for him. I spoke to him at the Champions League final actually, and he was there, you know, even, even though there was thousands and thousands of Liverpool fans yeah. there. And I was asking him what, what he's doing in the future, and the impression I got there and then was that he was going to stay at United. Do you like him, don't you? I don't mind. Is he it's David all... Moyes' boy, and you love David Moyes? <laughs> yeah. The transfers. By association. They're always, they're always transfers. No, I like him because he gives. It doesn't matter what team he's, he's in. He gives them a different uh, opportunity to break down a di another team. Defensively, he's solid enough mm. that he's not going to hurt you. But if you need, if you're going up against a team that you don't have a lot of time and space and they're pressing you high and you're struggling, you can put Fellaini in and he will give you a different option and, and it will create more opportunity. I think it says some of Manchester United, Tamara and Fellaini can be an important part to your team. Oh, so much yeah. so that he's a guy that can change the game coming off the bench. I think that says something about the limitations that sometimes we've seen from Manchester United. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Yeah. Completely agree. This is, I think he's an important player for United, and I think the way your Manchester United play is, you know, is awful considering their history. But, you know, that, as Ali says, he's an, he's an important member and he scored important goals in important times this year. Well, last season for him. An important member of our team is, is of course, Gab Marcotti, ah. always with us from Moscow. Hello, Gab. How are you? Yes. Very well, thank you. Where does the head stop and the shirt begin? No one knows. <laughs> Why isn't Sao Paulo starting to bar Gab? Does he need to check the doctor? Uh, no, actually, this is, one, this is one question that isn't mysterious about Argentina or about Sao Paulo. Is he came out and he's basically said, well, Dybala uh, plays in the exact same positions as Messi. Messi's come out and said, Ibala plays in the same positions as me, so he can be my reserve. So, should Messi not play, then uh, uh, then obviously then Dybala might play. The one wrinkle in this is, of course, against France, some uh, outlets in Argentina reported that Messi could play at center forward in sort of some false nine position, and of course that might open room up in theory for Paulo Dybala. Steve, how's your gold game? Gold game? It's gotta be golf. It's gotta be golf. How is my golf Obviously game? Obviously, Burnley, Nickel, <laughs> non -exi well. Non-existence. No? I can play. Um, I just don't play. I just would rather not spend five hours walking around a golf course. No? No. I'd rather be doing something important. So what do you do with those five hours? Yeah, what there? do you do with those five I hours? I sit and watch the horse race instead. <laughs> 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 you know, you can do both, probably. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right. How's your, your golf this summer out? been, Brian? What's that? How's your golf been this summer? It's been better. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Putters started working. Lovely. So, Ali's got good as well. Did you know Tiger was thinking about changing his? <laughs> <laughs> he did. It's a huge story. It's a huge story for him. It's a huge yeah. story. Yeah. 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 Oh, and he played well, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, because he changed his putter. <laughs> well, I mean, he was thinking about it, and he eventually changed it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for a guy who doesn't play golf, you really I know my stuff. Yeah. That's why I'm not playing golf. I'm reading yeah, about yeah, you know, all the yeah. sports, you see. That's the thing. <laughs> why does it seem no one is giving Croatia a chance to actually win the tournament? You got them going through to the final? Yes, I've got them in the final. There's yeah. a chance. There's a chance. Great yeah. chance. Jay Ajayi does as well, of course. Okay, I'm sure he does. Yeah, my friend. You yeah. know, he's Gab's friend, huh? Oh, of course, Gab's, Gab's an Eagles yeah, fan. Yeah, Eagles fan. And by the way, Jay Ajayi was important for that team. He changed that team in the running game. Well, they had to after that quarterback got done, didn't they? What's that quarterback's name? Mm. <laughs> Carson Wentz. You're looking for Carson Wentz. Is it, is it? Do you remember when he did his, uh, he did his knee, didn't he? His ACL, yeah. Gab was crying. Yes, he was. He, didn't, he, didn't, he did not believe in Nick Foles. No, no, no believe at all. Did you, Gab? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I did not believe in Nick Foles because it wasn't the right thing to do at the time. When, when the facts change, opinions change. Facts. <laughs>
And Gavad, Croatia going to the semi-finals as well, I think. Did he? Did he? I think he had Spain beating them, but he had them going through to the I semi-finals. Think everyone's got them in the semi-finals. Yeah, so that's good. So everybody's giving them a chance, actually, aren't they? Yeah, but not to win the tournament. I know, but to get to the semi-finals, you never know what's going to happen then. <laughs> Only a handful of Americans in the MLS All-Star roster cause for concern for the U.S. men's national team. Seven out of 27. Brian, were you an All-Star when you played? Uh, at times, yes. Yeah, that's right. It was a little bit different. Um, Ali, were you an All-Star? Uh, no, I was more of an outsider looking in sort of guy. <laughs> were you like the backup guy? Yes. Like if one of the real ones got injured. Correct, that was oh, me. That's nice. <laughs> that was me. But it was different times back then. Yeah. Can By I, the way, back in those days, the, the U.S. men's national team guys yes. were heavily favored as all-star picks. Oh, I'm just saying. Can I ask a question? Does this, does this game really count? No. no as it's, anything? It's, it's, okay. it's, it's a showpiece. Okay. Yeah, I know, yeah. But this, like, all-star, it's as if, like, you've been rewarded with something. It's not. Yeah, so the fans <laughs> vote. Yes. And then, so the fans vote them in, it's and then you get coaches starting eleven. Well. Okay. So the starting eleven fan vote, and that's why you see okay. like five or six Atlanta players on there. Sure, rightfully so. You know, yeah, they've been good, uh, and they have great support. Okay, so they're rewarded. Well, the coaches' picks are always interesting. Is it a problem and then you have for the commissioner I'm, pick and like, uh, like answering F2. the question? Does it matter for the U.S. team? No, I, I think. Uh, listen, the, the, what matters for the U.S. team is the system coming through. So MLS teams that play a big part of the system. And making sure that, that the youth is nurtured in a way that you're providing challenges, that part matters. The All-Star game? No, it's it's a reward for, for a lot of players. Some are just basically real popular, but great players in their own right. Um, that's why the All-Star game, to me, is a little bit diluted now. Because you don't have East playing West. Right. I prefer that. Yeah, yeah. you keep saying that as well. Yeah. Uh, not to get too technical with this, but when you have this GAM and TAM situation going on in MLS and it opens the door for all these young South American players to come in or international players to come in, it also creates competition for this sort of event, mm. where now the best players in most MLS teams are not American. They're actually foreign players. And so, and those are usually the players that get voted into the yeah, All-Star yeah. game. What do you prefer, GAM or TAM? Well, I'm more of a gam sort you're of guy. You're a gam. <laughs> uh, word on Rooney, Brian, your boy. Yeah, I'm very happy for him. Uh, you know, I, I said, I think people don't understand what Rain, Wayne Rooney is and the type of person he is. He's not coming here to retire. The, the, the guy has more drive than most people have ever seen. And that alone, along with his talent, will certainly help DC United improve. They put some other pieces around him. And I think Wayne Rooney is going to have a great impact in this league. Good stuff. All right, then. That is it for Extra Time. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Lots of sleep. Clean shame. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Fully rested. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Two massive games, of course. It is France against Argentina, Uruguay, Portugal. We'll be talking about both of them on the next edition of the show. It's not too late to join in our Match Predictor 2018. Go over to the website. Somebody's got zero points. <laughs> you <Your> bracket. <laughs> they got to catch up. Yeah, I know. They are struggling. Right then. Ali Moreno is with us to fill out his bracket. Uh, we've had some complaints from people saying that basically the pundits are just choosing their favorites. Okay. But there's nothing interesting about some of the brands. So you, should, you should choose. You I don't know. Should choose. I don't know. It's just what people have been saying. Well, on, you just, on, you're on choosing who you think is going to win, right? Okay, right. Let's start off, shall we, on the... By the way, I'm in second in this. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. Who, 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 who are you behind? Stuart Robson. Stuart Robson. But here's the other thing. I'm tied with, uh, with Seb, so I almost want to get out of second now. What if Seb beats you? Well, good. As long as I'm not together with Seb doing anything, <laughs> I'm fine. Spain, Russia. It's over for Russia. See you guys later. Croatia, Denmark? Uh, yeah, I want to take Croatia. Denmark doesn't have enough offensively. Sweden, Switzerland? Oh, Sweden. Yeah, I'm oh, going yeah? to ride that Sweden. Yes, sir. I'd like me some Swedish meatballs. Colombia, England? Oh, this hurts. Well, with your combo ways. Well, yes, and but no hummus. It means a different version of Colombia. This hurts so much. I don't want to do this. So. Tell those people saying that we're just picking our favorites. Yeah, take this. Why don't you want to do it? Because I like Colombia and I, and you're English and I, well, I don't like you, so wow. there you go. Wow, okay, right then. Spain, Croatia. Oh, we're not going oh, to the other oh, side? We're to the other side in a minute. Oh, so you just, you just, just mix, change your thing? Just mixing it up. Spain, Croatia. You got that kind of power. <laughs> That's it. Uh, yeah. 
Modric and Rakitic had a good tournament. That's it until now. Sweden, England. Hmm. You know, I told you I don't like you. What? Yeah, that's right. Wow. Penalty kicks. You know, so you know England penalty uh, kicks. You okay. get a little nervous. So who's going through to the final then between Spain and Sweden? Oh, come on now. Spain to go the, through? The ride continues, baby. Okay, right. Let's go to the other side then, shall we? Uruguay, Portugal. Too much good defender from Uruguay, too much Luis Suarez and Nelson Cavani, not enough Ronaldo. How many yellow cards in that game? Yeah. And there's going to be plenty for Uruguay. I'm, I'm, I'm certain some of them are not going to make it onto the semi-final. Uh, France, Argentina. I want to continue to see the car crash. Yeah. I want to continue to see the mess. Wow. I want to see what Argentina takes us in this tournament. Now, what about Brazil against Juan Carlos Osorio's Mexico? How many times do you think Seven Hurt can say Juan Carlos Osorio? Many, <laughs> but not enough. Brazil goes through. Belgium, Japan? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah I'm not making an argument for there Japan. There we go, right then. Uruguay, Argentina. The car crash continues, oh, baby. Right. <laughs> uh, Brazil, Belgium. Yeah, that's it for Belgium. Yeah, it, was a, it. it was a good story. It was cute and whatever. Golden generation. I'll see you guys later. How far is this car crash going to go? That's it. Find it's over now. <laughs> it's over now. Uh, it's over Brazil, now. Spain. Who will win it all? Brazil. Best Brazil. Team in the tournament. Most talented. Come through. Alejandro Moreno then predicts that Spain will be the World Cup champions. Just remember what? Brazil. Brazil will be the World That's Cup That's what champion. I said, Brazil. Yeah. No, you, no, you said Spain. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. That doesn't sound like me. <laughs> yeah. Ali said that Brazil would definitely be the World Cup champions. Just remind you, if you ever miss a show, you can download our daily podcast over on the website. You can also subscribe uh, via iTunes. We have to wait till Monday for Brazil against Mexico. The bookies have got Brazil at big favourites, 9-2 to two on. Mexico, meanwhile, at 3-1. to one. For more, looking ahead to this game, let's go over to Sebian Herc. Greetings from Moscow, where Mexico trained this morning. Before the practice session, Herc, we had a chance to listen in to a couple of players speaking in press conference. Alfredo Talavera, the backup goalkeeper, and Andres Guardado, the captain. One of the topics that came up, and it's where I want to go first, is kind of a 30,000-foot theme. This could be in many ways an all-or-nothing match for Mexico's golden generation. They're effectively aging out. Any round of 16 game for Mexico is the biggest game in Mexican soccer history. But I might suggest that this truly, really is the biggest game the Mexican national team, given all the weight put on this generation, has ever played. This is the golden generation, the Guardados, the Chicharitos, uh, the, all these players. Gio, Vela, everybody. Gio Vela, all these players that have played abroad, that have had somewhat sterling careers. It's all on this game because this is a do-or-die game. It's a must-win game. This is basically the last World Cup they're going to have in their prime. Chicharito's 30 years old. These players aren't going to be around performing at this level come 2022. So this is it, and it's this Brazil. It's the same squad, same generation that they beat in the U-17 World Cup final. Same generation that they beat in the 2012 Olympic gold medal game. It's all lining up. And it very much is the most important games of their Mex Mexican national team career. One player that we haven't seen much of, but who before the World Cup you said was a tournament player, is Giovanni Dos Santos. Mm. I wonder if you agree with me on this. This seems like the perfect game for Gio. One, because Brazil will probably let him have the type of space. And also because of the motivation that he would carry his father being Brazilian born. You're completely right. You have that motivation of being a dual national with Brazil. That motivation of you know what it's like to play versus Brazil. Brazil will let you have the ball. Don't know if you'll start. There will be a lot of bodies that last game uh, start, suffered cramps, suffered a uh, uh, injury that may not be around this game. I think he's best suited off the bench when the spaces are open and those dying 20 25 minutes, I think we're going to see Giovanni. And Giovanni always tends to surprise in the biggest moments. We saw it last World Cup versus Holland. This is that type of player. In these press conferences, there's not really all that much that comes out that's usually very interesting. I will say this. Andres Guardado's comments concerning Neymar, the simulation. Uh, you know, he said he likes to dive around a lot. He exaggerates fouls. To me, that's... Uh, in some way, bulletin board material for Brazil potentially, but also a very clear message to FIFA, to the guys running the VAR, and to Monday's referee. 
Well, he mentioned VAR, which is in a sense ridiculous because VAR can't check if you're diving. They won't, they're not going to call something back for diving. But what he does by this is he's conditioning the referee in the next in the next game. Hey, watch out for this guy. He likes to roll around. All of a sudden, if that's in the referee's back of his head, uh, it could play into the favor uh, of the Mexican players. They could maybe be a little bit more physical with them. We know that if you're physical with Neymar, you can tune him out of a match, especially in this World Cup. We've seen it. Uh, Costa Rica did it for a while. Switzerland has also done it. I think the Mexican national team, they know that he's a big part of Brazil. He's one of the best players in the world. If you can isolate him and take him out of the game, your chances of winning this game are better. Speaking of interesting comments, Juan Carlos Osorio's comments after the Sweden match, one of the things that jumped out to me from his press conference was the fact that he said, look, I hold my hand up, I got this wrong, and I learned some lessons. So what were the lessons then that he learned against Sweden, and how do those apply, if at all, to Brazil? 51 games, and in game number 51, he decides to finally repeat a lineup. And he also decides not to play to the opponents. He played into their hands. I think now with Juan Carlos Osorio, he understands that you have to play to Brazil. You have to, in some way, try to neutralize their best player in Neymar, neutralize Coutinho, neutralize that offensive transition they, game they have where they're very direct at times with Paulinho. He understands this. We're going to see a much more organized Mexican national team, a team that's going to be much more prepared because they have to be. What they showed versus Sweden was not really characteristic of what we've seen under Juan Carlos Osorio. This is the biggest game in Juan Carlos Osorio's tenure. Every do or die moment he's had, whether it's Chile, the 7-0, the 4-1 versus Germany, the 2-1 versus uh, uh, Jamaica, this is it now. He can reverse all that and make it to that final quinto partido, that coveted quinto partido, with a good game. Mexico versus Brazil draws closer and closer Monday in Samara. For Hercules Gomez, I'm Sebastian Salazar. We send it back to you. Thank you very much. For more from the boys, be sure to download their daily podcast, Two on Three.